Hey guys, welcome to this episode of the Happy Knitting Podcast. My name is Julia and I'm coming to you from Germany. Today is Sunday the 25th of March 2018. I'm so glad that you're joining me today to talk about some knitting, some yarn, some yarn related things. Um, and let's just jump right in. So, um, first of all, we have a Ravelry group called the Happy Knitting Podcast group in the group tab on Ravelry. And that is where you can find all kinds of fun threads. For example, um, knit alongs, giveaways, um, swap threads, an introduction thread. If you have any questions, you can leave them there. So that would be a good place for you guys to start. If you want to find me on Ravelry, um, my username is slightly user unfriendly because it is um, Wipfi and that is spelled W-U-E-P-F-I. And of course you can find me on Instagram as the Happy Knitting Podcast and that is where I am definitely the most active. So if you want to stay up to date with what's happening, for example, if I'm skipping a podcast or if I'm doing things, traveling, knitting, whatever, the most, um, the best place to find me is definitely on Instagram. So um, we currently have a knit along running in our um, group and that is um, the Sock Blankathon, which is a knit along to knit with a sock blank. You don't have to knit socks, you can knit anything you want out of a sock blank. The only requirement is that you use at least 50 grams of a sock blank. Um, so far this thread and this knit along has been so much fun. I'm really enjoying seeing your projects, your beautiful sock blanks and what you're making out of them pop up on Instagram and in the Ravelry group. It's so much fun and definitely making me want to knit and buy all the sock blanks. So that is running until um, May 15th. Um, feel free to join in if you haven't already. I think you have plenty of time. Um, I still haven't really sorted out the prizes, but I do have some things in the works, so we should get there pretty soon. Um, besides that, um, the winner from our last knit along, Steffi, I'm so sorry I haven't even replied to your message, but your package is ready to be shipped. It was going to be shipped last week, but then my trustworthy um, postage assistant, namely my boyfriend Kai, didn't do it. So I will ship it next week. I'm sorry. Anyways, um, I think that is enough blabber for the beginning. So let's just jump into some knitting. It is so weird because today I don't have a finished object and that just feels weird to me. But quite frankly, I didn't have that much knitting time. I didn't even bring out all of my whips this week. But what I have brought over is my blankets. So I have um, currently two um, blankets on my needles slash crochet hook. The first one is my second Cozy Memories blanket I ha and I haven't shown that in a while so I thought I might just show that to you today. So um, I have knit one of those blankets before previously and this is my second one with slightly larger squares and this is where we are. So for um, this blanket, I'm using the pattern by um, Kemper Ray, Ray, oh my gosh, which is the coziest memories pattern on Ravelry, except I am doing 56 stitches and I'm doing it on a two millimeter or US size zero needle. So I haven't shown this in ages and quite frankly, I don't remember where I was last time when I showed this to you, but I've kind of been working this way along the top and at the same time adding along the sides so yeah I don't really want to go through every single mini because I think that's quite boring for you guys but I have been putting in some squares and yeah I'm really enjoying it I've always find this project to be very very slow but I do really like the finished product and I or we use our first one all the time so I do really like it and all these ends they just need to be trimmed they're all woven in by the way, but I just never trim them. But that is my blanket number one. And actually when I took it out of the bag the other day to work on it, I was actually quite surprised because in my mind it was still like this small, but it's not even that small anymore. So that is my blanket number one. My second blanket is of course my crochet granny stripe blanket. And that is also my second crochet blanket. The first one I did was the granny square where you do one giant square and for this one I'm doing these stripes. So this is loosely based on the pattern by um, Attic24. Um, and uh, this is what it looks like. 
So I do have a stitch marker somewhere when I showed it to you last, oh yeah, on the other side. Can you see my macaroon stitch marker? So you can see I've made quite a bit of progress. Um, when I started this at first, I was always doing two rows of each color and I was doing all pastel, beautiful colors and then I was really bored. So at some point I just decided to throw in all the random colors and all the pops of color that I like. And now I'm really enjoying it. It is definitely much crazier now, but I really, really, really like it. And I'm doing this with a, I think four millimeter hook. I have no idea about crochet, which is why I'm so bad at talking about crochet, but I really like it. That last mini I put in, um, by the way, is um, one that I showed, um, I think two episodes ago from um, when Erin of Holland Handmade, she sent us some yarn and some mini packs. So I wanted to put some of those minis in here. Um, these are the socks that I finished last week out of Yarny Love UK. There are lots of random minis that I got as gifts. Um, for example, I really like the purple and the green. These ones I got from Louisa of Miss Mothballs. There's part of my drifter shawl in here. This was a pair of socks that I did out of Life in the Long Grass. Um, I put in some Christmas yarn as well. Again, the ends just need to be trimmed. Um, this is my Christmas yarn from Felt Fusion. Um, the yarn underneath was a self-striping Jinx yarn that I used for my Christmas cast on. So yeah, um, I've been asked many times, how do I do the joins? I do magic knots, but because I don't trust my magic knots, I also then leave the tails and weave them in. So it's not the neatest way to do it, but it's the safest way and that's what I've done for my first blanket and that is holding up really well. Oh, I really like this blanket. I really like looking at it now. Um, so yeah, those are my blankets. Next up, whew, I still have four works in progress and that's only the ones that I'm showing you guys today. So much for monogamous knitting. So I'll show you this one first. This is a new cast on very random, but I really felt like knitting a cowl and I never knit cows. Like I just usually don't see the point, but I really wanted to. And there was a yarn in my stash that I've been wanting to knit for ages. I bought it over a year ago with a very specific purpose and then just never used it. So the yarn that I'm talking about is this beautiful yarn that is probably going to show up more blue than it really is on camera because that's what purple does. Hang on very hard to show you guys this color but it's the most beautiful yarn ever oh my gosh I love this so much I wish it would show up but this is a Wollmeiser Rohschmerz and Wollmeiser blend which is their what is it it's something with cashmere why doesn't it say that on here I don't know it is their cashmere base and it is absolutely beautiful. It's my first time knitting with their cashmere base. Um, the colorway is called Der Letzte Versuch, which means the last to try. And maybe some of you who are better and more familiar with Wollmeiser will be able to tell more from this label. But anyways, it's this really beautiful yarn. It came in a 150 gram um, skein and I thought it would be perfect to make a cowl out of it. So um, the cowl that I decided to knit is the monochrome Cowl by Hohi Locatelli and it's so much fun. I haven't that done that much but essentially what it is is a cowl that alternates between stockinette and then different little fun texture sections and that is just very enjoyable to knit as well. So so far I've only done the rib and the stockinette and the first texture section which was a really fun little eyelet texture and I just really love how this yarn is knitting up. I wish I could show you better but the stitch definition of this yarn is just amazing. It's just absolutely beautiful to work with and I'm really enjoying every stitch. Um, in terms of the cowl, I don't like cowls that are super wide because then I feel like they just hang really weird. And we do live in a country where it does get cold. So I cast on way less stitches. I think I cast on 144 stitches, which is what some people on Ravelry had done in the past. So I just decided to go with it. Also knowing that my gauge tends to be um, on the large side. Um, the needles that I am using are higher, higher. No, they're not. They're Knit Pro Zings 3mm. 
in the 60 centimeter um, length, which I think is 24 inches, right? Anyways, that's where I am with this and I'm really, really enjoying this. And I'm total impulse cast on, but I have no regrets. Um, so that is that. Of course, all my other whips are socks. I guess nobody's surprised by that. And now I've just caught my cashmere yarn in the zipper. Um, so first of all, in my Lamy Projects bag, which I still love, um, is my um, sock blankathon project. So I'm still working on the sock blank from Amy of Stranded Dye Works. This is her Piñata colorway. And this is where I am. I'm still working on the first sock. I really haven't made that much progress, but that's also because with sock blanks, I really want to enjoy every stitch. So I don't want to just, I have some travel knitting where I just knit stock in it and don't really care. But with this, I kind of want to be able to focus on it. So I'm still working on the first sock. I have put in a fish lips kiss heel in garter stitch and I'm now working on the foot. Absolutely love the colors. I really like the way it's knitting up as well. Nothing too exciting to show you to be honest, but I'm just really enjoying it. And as usual, I am knitting my 64 stitch sock on 2.25 millimeter needles. So still loving this. I'm still de um, debating whether or how many pairs of sock blank socks I want to knit in this cow. I'm kind of tempted to cast on all of my sock blanks because it's the perfect excuse. But at the same time, I really want to enjoy it. So I don't know yet. But anyways, that is my sock blank sock number one. Next up, I have two travel projects. Um, in here, oh yeah, that's going to be tough to show. In here I have my 11 socks, which is the sock set from Giddy Yarns, who is Helen. She's a UK indie dyer. I showed this to you last week. Um, it's an 11 colorway, which is um, based on 11 of Stranger Things. And I got the sock set with a matching mini skein. And the reason why this is hard to show is because I have knit one heel and then stopped. So I have one sock with one heel and one sock without a heel. But yeah, I'm very bad at showing this to you guys today, but who cares? This is Giddy Yarns. 11 is the colorway on her merino nylon sock base, which I love. As you can see, one heel done, one heel still missing. Not sure what else to tell you about this. I really want to get back to these because I really enjoy them. So hopefully, maybe even today. And my last um, whip is the one that I actually worked on on the train when I was traveling. And these are my Knit Picks Felici socks. And you guys, you remember, remember last week when I was so positive about this yarn, or more positive than I usually am? Well, so this is the first sock. I didn't have it done last week, but I have finished it since. And I'm not sure if you can tell, but there are stripes, obviously. Duh. And then, down here, what the hell happened? So I was knitting the stripe and I was like, this is a weird color. That's not supposed to happen because I was um, like, this color should have been there. But it was very, very pale. And then the color changed into pink. And then there was a knot. And then the whole color repeat was just completely messed up. So once again, it comes down to you get what you pay for. I love Felici anyways, but if you are slightly more OCD than I am with these things, this might really annoy you. I'm not quite sure how I feel about this. I also don't like that already leading up to this knot, like everything on the foot, the colors are very muddy and yeah, I'm not too impressed. If you compare it to the second sock, which has a fresh ball of yarn, you can see that the colors are quite different. But anyways, um, that much said, the first sock is done. It's just a basic plain vanilla sock, self-strapping. And I have since started the second one and I am now working on the cuff. So I should just breeze through these because strapping socks always go so fast. I worked this much on the train from Munich to Frankfurt and then I never picked it up again, but oh well. 
So that is it in terms of work in pro works in progress. I still have my Damia Kalopa and oh my gosh, I'm talking about this every week. I just don't want to keep showing it to you until I have finished the body and I'm so freaking close that I just need to find time to work on it. But hopefully next week. So um, being done with works in progress. The next thing to talk about, of course, are my stash acquisitions. Um, and the lighting is all dark and funny. Oh well. So um, in terms of acquisitions, I have two things to show you guys. First of all, I have a scan, which I'm really excited about. Um, I have been wanting to get some more nice tweed yarn because I don't have very much except for like the um, like Regia or Lana Grossa tweed, which I do like, but is quite rough. But there are now a, quite a few indie dyers who dye tweed yarns that are not rough, but instead very soft. So I ordered um, a skein of tweed yarn from this dyer. She's a German indie dyer called Koniswolle. And I ordered one in her tweed base, or Donegal base, which is 85% um, um, South American Merino wool, 15% viscose nips. This is a sock white yarn and this is the skein that I got and I really, really like it. The colorway is this one, Purpurhund. There we go. And look at that. It's blowing out a little bit as my camera apparently tends to do, but I think it's a really fun colorway and It'll be great for socks. I think it'll make some beautiful socks. This is a much better color representation. You can see the little tweed flecks coming out of the yarn. I'm really excited to be working with this. So that is my first acquisition. My second acquisition is uh, my first shipment of the latest Hedgehog Fibers Sock Club. So if you're in the club and you don't want to see it, please skip because I will show it. So I'm going to show the colors now. I got two skeins. I got the Sock Club, which is um, their sock base, which is a 90-10 merino nylon mix. And I've talked many, many times about how much I love the Hedgehog Fiber Sock Base. I know lots of people don't love it. I think it's a great base. And for me, it holds up fantastic. And I wash my socks in the washing machine but my Hedgehog Fiber Sock Yarn Socks, I wear the most, I love the most, and oh my gosh. Anyways, you guys want to see the colors, right? I'll start with the one which I absolutely love, and that is um, this one. When I saw this, I was like, oh, that's a watermelon, but it's actually called Cherry Bob. But for me, this is absolutely watermelon colors, complete with the green and the seed flecks with the black. I think this is a stunning colorway. I also think it's kind of out of the box for Hedgehog Fibers and I really like it. I really like their vibrant colors because a lot of time you get this sort of typical one color with lots of speckles um, type of yarn from them, which I love as well, but this one will knit up quite differently and I'm really excited about this one. The second one, I at first I didn't really know how I feel about it. Uh, but now I do think I really like it as well. And that is this one. This one is called, let's see, Primavera. So I think that's Italian for spring, right? Again, I think it's kind of unusual. In the beginning, the combination of gray and green, woo, something fell down. Um, the combination of the gray and the green was kind of weird to me. But now the longer that I've had this yarn just lying around on my desk, and keep, I kept looking at it, the more I kind of like this as well. This is not something I would have picked up in a store, but I do really like it. So I think I'm going to keep both. With Hedgehog Fiber Clubs, I always pretend to myself that I might sell some of these to justify buying them in the first place, but I never do. But yeah, so these are my two Hedgehog Fiber skeins for this month. I'm quite happy with these. Um, yeah. So that is it in terms of my yarny acquisitions and essentially that is it in terms of all my yarny talk today as well. So if you're only here for the yarn and the knitting then thank you for watching and I will see you again in two weeks time. 
in two weeks because next week I, it will be Easter and I'm going away and I'm really excited and I won't have the time or the space or the location to podcast. So I'll see you again in two weeks unless you want to stick around and listen to me yammer on about nothing at all. So um, in terms of life in general, which is what I used to call the segment back when I was actually regularly doing it. Um, these days the weeks go so fast and only when it's time to podcast again I realize how little knitting I've been doing. Um, so yeah, I've just been really really busy, which is a good thing. I've just come back from a work trip. I left to um, on, on Thursday morning and we had a big um, kickoff event, which meant um, we had a party on Friday night. So only yesterday in the afternoon I actually got back, which meant my weekend was kind of cut short, but it was also really fun, so I don't mind. But that has really, really cut into my knitting time. I usually knit every single day. Like I usually knit before I um, start work in the morning, I get up early and I knit. And of course after work I knit. And maybe if I skip my lunch break or if I have a quick lunch break, I knit. Um, that's because mostly I work from home as well, by the way. I don't really knit in the office. Um, and I don't really have time to knit in the office either. But then, of course, when I go to um, like overnight trips, I, that's when I really stop knitting. And it feels so weird, like Friday was the first time in ages where I didn't pick up uh, my knitting needles at all the entire day. And that just feels really, really weird. But, oh well. Um, so next week is Easter, which I'm so excited about. Um, so that means a four day weekend. We have the Friday off, we have the Monday off. And Kai and I, we are driving down to our favorite little place um, near the Alps in an area called Algoy. And I am planning to take all my knitting and just knit and knit and knit and knit. Um, I am so excited for it. I also really need a holiday because um, I've been, I haven't had a single day off since I started this new job and I'm really starting to feel it by now. So I'm really appreciating four days off. And yeah, so I'm really excited about that. We're just going to hang out in the little um, family apartment that Kai's parents have down there, just the two of us. Um, maybe, I kind of want to go skiing, Kai doesn't really. So we'll see how the weather is and if it's even cold enough to have proper snow. Um, and besides that, maybe do some hiking, just hang out, have lots of amazing Bavarian food. Um, maybe drive into Austria. I am really, really excited in, in case you can't tell. I feel like I haven't had a proper education in a while as well. And that's a nice thing about down there. Like as soon as you're there, you're just there and you don't have to bother with a hotel and you know where everything is. So there's lots of time for knitting. And um, of course, we're also taking on new car, which is really exciting. And I will definitely be posting like photos of our trip and what I get up to knitting wise and stuff on Instagram as usual. But that does mean, of course, that I won't be recording next week, so I'll, I'll be recording the week after. Also, um, two weeks after Easter, on the 14th and 15th, there is a little yarn festival in an area close to where I actually grew up. Um, it's in, what's it called? Everyone keeps saying it's in Blaufelden, but it's not. Um, what is it called? I don't know. It's a, I thought it was a really small yarn show. I've never heard of it. But then I found out there are quite a few dyers that I really like um, going to that. So I will try to find out where it, what it is. And if any one of you guys is by any chance going, which I don't think because it's a kind of small place in the middle of nowhere. But if you are, please do come along and say hi. I will be going with my little sister, which I'm really excited about. And I think that should be lots of fun. Besides that, there is not that much to talk about. We have a beautiful sunny day today. Yesterday was so sad because it was another beautiful day. And, but we were, I was driving home with my boss in the car and of course all the streets, all the, all, um, everything was just ridiculously full and full of traffic jams because it was the beginning of the school holidays. So we spent pretty much all of the day in the car in beautiful weather and it was kind of sucky. But anyways, today is really beautiful as well. 
we just come, came back from a breakfast um, date um, at Lake Starnberg, which is one of my favorite places to go on the weekend. So yeah, um, now I'm talking about the weather. Maybe I should be English um, or British, I should say. Anyways, oh my gosh, can you tell I've had a long week? I certainly can. So I'm just going to let you guys go and rescue you from this rambly chatter about nothing at all. But I told you in advance it was going to be about nothing at all. So there you go. I hope you have as much fun with the sock plank um, sock plankathon as I am having. Um, words are not coming out of my mouth anymore. So let us just stop here. Thank you so much for watching. Thank you for keeping up with the craziness that is this podcast. Um, I will try to be more sane in the future, but no guarantees. Thank you so much for watching. Have a wonderful Sunday. Have a great and hopefully knitting filled two weeks. And I will see you in two weeks time. Happy Easter. Happy knitting.